welterweight champion, George Rush St. Pierre, 27 years old, the Hawaiian born, UFC lightweight champion, BJ the Prodigy Penn, 30 years old, a significant reach advantage will be enjoyed by George St. Pierre. We have waited for a long time for this rematch. It is upon us and with the official introductions, here is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, two UFC warriors have now entered the world's ultimate proving ground for champions to face each other down in the octagon for the second time. And now, the moment of truth UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Welterweight Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Jiu-Jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 13 wins with four losses and one draw. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in at 168 pounds. Fighting out of Wanaku, Hilo, Hawaii. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the current UFC lightweight champion and the former UFC welterweight champion presenting the challenger, the Corner. This man is a wrestler and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu fighter. Only a professional record of 17 wins with two losses. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds. Running out of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending UFC Welterweight Champion of the World, George gentlemen we've been over the instructions protect yourself at all times follow my instructions we will have a clean fight touch gloves let's make it official how good is this wow st pierre pen man i got some serious goosebumps tell me about it herb dean our referee you ready to fight you ready let's do it St. Pierre in the black trunks, and in the white trunks. BJ has excellent takedown defense, but George St. Pierre has improved his wrestling dramatically over the years. Title fight scheduled for five, five minute rounds. Exchanging these early. These two future Hall of Famers in the prime of their careers. Many believe as the fight goes deeper, St. Pierre gains an advantage. Only time will tell if the fight does go deep. Looking for a single. Great takedown defense with his flexibility. Is BJ Don't grab Penn. the shorts. Don't grab the shorts. You hear BJ screaming, hey. Do not grab the shorts. The shorts. Grab the shorts. Incredible flexibility and takedown defense that he showed in the Matt Hughes fight was really shocking to a lot of people. Matt Hughes had a, a leg, he had a single on him, and had his, his foot twisted up towards BJ's hips. And BJ's still hopping around on his other leg like nothing was wrong. So successful with his takedowns. George St. Pierre out wrestling some of the finest wrestlers in mixed martial arts today. George again trying very hard to complete that takedown. BJ landed a little right hand over the top. How 
significant has our sport become around the world? George St. Pierre, recognized as the 2008 Canadian Athlete of the Year. It's so crazy how far the sport has come since you and I have been involved in the mic. We, we both started out at a similar time. And uh, back in the old days when we were in these little tiny arenas and there was no one in the crowd, would you have ever imagined this? Not a chance. It's a testament to our leadership, to our great fans, and to the tremendous athletes and competitors in the game today. And these are two of the best of all time. St. Pierre tries to come over the top. Watch for the jab of BJ Penn. BJ also has very elusive head movement. He's very good at moving away, moving just out of range, and coming back and countering. And again, George working hard for that single, switches to a double. BJ's balance is just outstanding. It's unbelievable, Joe. Well, it, it isn't when you talk to people that have worked with him, guys like Randy Couture, that say, you know, he has a hard time getting him down. And then when you do get him down, he springs back up to his feet like a jack-in-the-box. He knew that the 155-pound champion and the former UFC heavyweight champion has a hard time getting you down. I mean, that's just incredible. That's a great point. He's a talented dude. Maybe one of the most talented guys in the sport. Perhaps the most naturally gifted as far as the talent and the skills, the most naturally gifted athletic fighter could very well be George St. Pierre. BJ Penn is very naturally athletically gifted too. He just doesn't look like it. You know, he, he doesn't look like a bodybuilder like George St. Pierre does. And George St. Pierre is like he's sculpted out of granite. Whereas BJ looks like, you know, regular athletic guy. But unbelievably physically talented. You're talking about a guy who won the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu World Championships for the first American ever, and he won it after training for three years. I mean, it's amazing to get your black belt after training for three years, but to win the world, the world championships as a black belt after three years, that's just unheard of. These guys are once-in-a-lifetime athletes. 45 seconds remains in round one. St. Pierre grew up mentally after his first fight against Matt Hughes. It was also a disappointing loss to Matt Hughes that turned around the career and the dedication of BJ Penn. Lincoln. seconds of round one. Interesting first round. A round in which St. Pierre is trying to take BJ oh, Peck down. Listen to Greg, listen to Greg, listen to Greg. Okay, calm your breathing down, my friend. Lots of water. There you go. Okay, calm your breathing down. You won that round very well. Listen to me. If you want to take him down, you got to pick him up, but don't even worry about that. Okay? Kickbox him. You're doing all day. Kickbox him. Take around and strike him. And you need to explode it. After he pushes on the fence, explode with the punches out, okay? Come on with the punches, okay? Check those kicks, bro. Greg Jackson, Rudy Valentino in the corners of St. Pierre and Penn. Interesting advice from Greg Jackson. He said, take a round and kickbox him. Will BJ look to establish the jab here in round two? There's one. Changing levels a lot is GSP. Cut over left. George, the game plan is simple. At least it's being displayed so far. Clinch work. Try to 
break down BJ Penn. Well, first of all, BJ did not even look a little bit tired. And you can see that his conditioning is up to flight. I mean, it's only second round. Jay's 
commitment to fitness. George is a much bigger fighter. Walks around at 185. BJ, you've said before, his best weight is 155. He weighed in at 168. Oh, nicely set up. BJ's nose is bleeding right now. He clinched in round one. He took Penn down in round two. Now he's trying to work his striking here in round three, mixing it up as St. Pierre. Nice job. Oh. Quick jam by Penn. that St. Pierre has become. Arguably the best takedown artist in mixed martial arts, and he doesn't have that natural wrestling background. It's incredible. He's not just the best takedown artist, the best wrestler in MMA. To the point where his own country of Canada actually talked to him about, you know what, why don't you wrestle with us in the Olympics? Yeah, he's just, it's just a credit to his discipline, his athleticism, his intelligence, his ability to objectively look at his skill set and find the weaknesses and improve upon them and his willingness to compete with the very best in the world at every single discipline. His head trainer, Faraz, has said he's never late for a workout. He's always ready, and he always works his tail off. A blueprint, a blueprint for the future MMA athlete. He's a, a guy that is outstanding in every single aspect of the game. You always need to be careful, though, when messing around in BJ Penn's guard. It's so slippery now at this point, though, Mike. You know, the third round, covered in sweat. It's, it's so easy for, for GSP to shrug off that high guard. You know, unless you have knee sleeves on and ankle tapes, you know, unless you have something that's going to provide you with some traction, it's very difficult to hold a guy in your car, especially a powerful, explosive, naturally larger man like GSP. amazing balance. He just holds that leg up there and he's preventing it with an arm. Another take down. He's got him down again. St. Pierre in his career, 5-0 and in fights that have gone the distance. It's just about a year ago that St. Pierre enjoyed the greatest moment of his fighting career. His revenge in his title defense against Matt Serra in Montreal. Tonight, a victory could surpass that magical night. Big elbow. Even round one, round two, St. Pierre. So far, round three. Again, the advantage, GSP. Just methodical in his attack on the prodigy. Just he just took a look at the time. Oh. 
Joe went right into the championship rounds. Round four. There's a minute away. What do you want, DJ? Three. Give your mouth three. Give your mouth three. Give your mouth three. DJ. Three. You're right. Three. 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 Right. Hey DJ, this is all in your mind. You, you, your mind's strong. You're in shape to do this, bro. You turn this around. You turn this around, DJ. BJ, let me get your nose. Let me get the nose. BJ, BJ, look at me. Win this round right now. Come on. Hey, what does letting your hands round. go mean? What does letting your hands go mean? Let it go, go BJ. You go for broke. Come on. Around. Okay, when you come out, you strike with him. But you have, you're, we're winning this fight, okay? Strike with them a little bit. Unpredictable. Then take him down. Mix it up. Mix it up. Okay, mix it up. Nice. Look at this beautiful fake jab. And another jab. Establishing the center of the octagon, the welterweight champion. DJ Penn is starting to look discouraged, and George St. Pierre is looking fired up. Caught him with a jab, followed with the kick. What we have not seen is Penn utilize what we thought on paper might be a speed advantage. Exactly whatever he wants to do so far look in this, this fight. Pass. Just outstanding. I mean, let me tell you something. BJ Penn's guard is notoriously hard to pass. He's legendary for his guard, his ability to hold guys in place, and he can't do anything with GSP. GSP's got him inside control, and Penn is getting battered. Strikes to the back of the head. St. Pierre. Don't hit the back of the head. In another advantageous position. This is the position where BJ Penn got stopped by Matt Hughes. incredibly impressed by his ability to control BJ on the ground. He nearly got to the mouth. Bro, if you look the back of your head again, I'm gonna stand you up. Do not do it. BJ brings it back to half guard. And George's gonna pop that leg right back out again. Wow. And I like how he pushes off BJ's legs to secure the, the, the side control position. You heard Herb Dean warn GSP about the strikes to the back of the head, so he goes to the hammer fist. BJ, you have to do something. You need to fight back. There you see him telling BJ that he needs to fight back. I don't think he can at this point. I think he's just exhausted. Absolutely dominated rounds two, three, and so far here in round four. His confidence in his ability to pass the guard makes him do, makes him open up too. Because once he gets back into BJ's guard, he's really, he's very confident that he can just pop his leg back out and get to a dominant position again. one of the questions that was asked because there was so much written and talked about this fight Joe is who has evolved more since the matchup in 06 and I think the answer is quite evident so far in this fight tonight it's George St. Pierre just under 90 seconds remains in round four and what this is is a, a testament to George St. Pierre's discipline his focus and his work ethic because no one works harder than this guy and we're seeing it here. Again, passes. I mean, that's 
just incredible. Once questioned if he was mentally strong enough to be one of the best of all time, George St. Pierre has answered and answered assertively. Well, you know what? He's made mistakes in the past, but the thing about George St. Pierre that I find most impressive is how honest he is about those mistakes. Yes. When he talks about fights, he's very honest about the emotions that go through his head. He even spoke about the first BJ fight. After the first round, he said, I was hurt and I was scared. How many guys say that? How many guys talk like that? BJ, it is that honesty that he has, not just with his fans, but he's communicating. Look at this. He's, BJ's getting battered. He might just finish it, Joe. But he, he has that kind of honesty. He has that kind of honesty with himself as well. And that's why his skills continue to improve. He's oh, not the loser. there. Herb Dean might stop this. As long as BJ keeps moving, he's not going to stop it. Ten seconds remains in round four. We're going to head to the fifth and final round. St. Pierre in full control. The doctor took a look at BJ Penn. Take a look on our fight replay. Watch behind in the corner, BJ Penn. Yep, he's, that's it. Done. His brother cut it off. Yep. You know what? And that's an excellent, excellent decision. Why, why let him get beaten down and knocked out? Why let him take unnecessary punishment? And like what I said before, I don't think he had anything left in his body to pull out. Just total domination turned in by the welterweight champion, the French-Canadian, George Rush St. Pierre. A disappointed, but still extremely proud Hawaiian, the lightweight champion, the prodigy BJ Penn. Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, at end of round number four, on the doctor's advice, referee Herb Dean has called a stop to this contest, declaring the winner by TKO and Steele! Rush St. What a champion. I'm here with the champion, George St. Pierre. This was the biggest fight in mixed martial arts history, the biggest fight in your career, and you put on the most dominant performance of your career against one of the toughest guys in the sport. 
Just an incredible, outstanding performance. Give us your thoughts on the fight. Well, uh, my thought on the fight, I, I've been, uh, I've been training for this fight uh, since September, so uh, I had a lot of pressure. I, I, this time, you know, last time I fought him, I won in the decision. This time, I really wanted to take him out, and I'm glad that I did it. He's very tough. <laughs> it was an amazing performance, and one of the most impressive parts about it was your domination of him on the ground. Were you surprised at how easily you passed his guard? First, the, not, not, it's not the key. BJ Penn is a world champion in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So my strategy was in the first two rounds to make a wrestling match with him because he's got very quick and and he's got a, his shoulder is made for boxing. So because he has small shoulder, by making him wrestle, all the blood would have gone in his shoulder and it would have become stiff and his hand would not as come out as it is usually. So my first two round was wrestling, then after I was going to take him up, pick him up, standing up. Tremendous night for George Rush St. Pierre. Elevating his status this evening as the greatest pound for pound fighter in the world today. Watch this, watch this. He didn't land it, but he was victorious in an impressive fashion. According to game plan, all throughout the fight, passing one of the most dangerous and effective guards at will, jabbing effectively and overwhelming the prodigy, B.J. Penn, George St. Pierre by TKO after 20 minutes of fighting tonight. What a night, Joe Rogan, for GSP. Unbelievable performance by George St. Pierre. And, you know, two things on this. One, it, it, BJ Penn, I believe, is a great 150 pound, 155 pound fighter. I think that in order for him to reach the full potential of his career, he should stay at the weight that he is naturally the best at. That, that's 155. That's where he should be. He shouldn't be fighting these larger, bigger guys. I know that he enjoys the challenge. I know that it, this meant a lot to him to try to beat George St. Pierre, but when all things are equal, the great big man is always going to beat the great small man. The great big man tonight is that man right there, George Rush St. Pierre.